So here we have J63. This is one of my favorite customs that we've built. And this one was based on a mid 90s Ducati Super Sport 900 SP. But then we took it all apart and saved the engine, built a stainless frame, some alloy bodywork, and a few other things. But that's not what we're interested in today. What we want to look at is what's underneath. So I've replaced the original M unit that was in this bike with the brand new M unit blue. And it's worth noting a few differences between these two and one of them is most notably the uh, mounting bolt spacing is different on the original M unit and the M unit blue. Uh, the M unit blue is a little bit narrower. Uh, in this case, I've only used one mounting bolt just to kind of hold it down for this demonstration. If I was actually making this upgrade and this update, I would drill a new hole, tap it, and then I'd have two mounting points, no problem. Um, also, uh, the main power input is still in kind of the same orientation, so that fit just fine. But the order of outputs and inputs has been shifted a little bit. So when I made the original installation, all the wires were just the right length, went just to the right spot. And now with the M unit blue, they didn't fit quite as well as they did on this one, but I was able to kind of pull them and stretch them and kind of get it all to go together. This is a quick and dirty installation, meaning we didn't use all the outputs, we didn't use all the inputs, we're really just focused on the core functionality of the M unit blue and an on-bike demonstration. So you can also see uh, originally all the wires came out from the outputs and the inputs on the side. Now they come out to the top. We were fortunate on this bike, we actually do have enough stack height to fit this underneath so we could actually take this out and test ride it. Um, if you're very vertically limited on, on space, you may need to come up with a different way to attach your wires to the M unit blue. But uh, that's just for you guys doing retrofits. If you're doing a new install, of course, make sure you leave enough vertical height for the wires to exit the M unit. Now, the first thing I wanna show you guys on, on the bike is how to pair the uh, M unit with a smartphone. Now, for the moment, the app, which is called M Ride, is only available for Android phones. And I'm doing this installation with a Galaxy S7, I guess. And in order to do that, first you want to go into the M Ride app and you start by clicking on hardware. Uh, which hardware do you want to install? Yeah, it's an M unit blue, cool. Uh, which vehicle, I've already updated a couple of vehicles in here and in this case we're gonna do J63. And now it's gonna start walking us through the exact process to do this. Uh, connect vehicle as stated in manual, or connect M unit to vehicle as stated in manual, done. Uh, distance, less than one meter, done. Uh, now we need to switch it on. And for this, you do need to have a manual um, connection to the lock input, like an ignition switch. If you're planning to use the keyless go primarily, you don't have to install a, an ignition switch, but you do need to have a temporary connection for the lock input to provide 12 volts so you can turn this thing on. J63 has an ignition switch because it used the old M unit. So we'll just turn that on. And the important part here is you need to honk the horn button three times within the first second that you've turned the M unit on. And this timing is really critical. So I'm gonna go ahead and turn this on and immediately three button clicks on the horn button. If you get the timing wrong and you wait longer than one second, it will actually honk the horn. It's a good indication that you did not enter the setup pairing menu. You actually just uh, initialize the M unit and then honk the horn three times. Strangely, that will enter a different calibration setting menu that is not what you want when you're trying to pair with the app. So we got it right that time. Just realize if you heard the horn honk, it was wrong. Try it again. Okay, so yes, the blinkers flashed. Next, uh, push the start button until the blinkers take turns flashing. Uh, this is a 10 second press and hold on the start button. Again, if you had missed uh, the setup and you didn't get it in that first one second, when you push the start button, it's gonna start the starter. In this case, I'm pressing and holding the start button, but nothing is happening. So that means I got it right. If you push the start button and the starter goes, you're not in the setup menu. Now you see blinkers are flashing. So yeah, we'll tell the app that happened. It now says searching for hardware and hardware successfully connected. Perfect. So now we've got the M unit blue paired with the Samsung S7. And that means that we can do some other cool stuff. One of the first things I'll show you is, is pretty neat, but it's under a fairly unintuitive uh, menu. So if you go into custom parts 
and then I'm unit blue, you can go into uh, status, and that shows you an image of the actual M unit blue. Now from here you can actually turn on and off outputs just by tapping a button on the bike. So let's say I want to turn on the low beam for whatever reason. I can do that and it just turned on. Or maybe I want to turn on the brake light. Bam, I can do that too and it just turned on. And all I did was touch the phone. This is insane. Maybe I want to turn on the, the turn signal. Yeah, I can do that. The other one too. And same thing, turn them off, no big deal. Uh, really interesting and, and cool. Um, as you're looking at the app, it also has some more information where it's actually showing you what the uh, current voltage of the battery is, how many amps are being drawn, and how many watts that it equates to. So when I turn on the low beam, you can see that that's drawing 1.3 amps, and that's a total of 17 watts. That's actually calculating that stuff real time. So one of the other interesting features of the M unit is that it constantly monitors the power consumption of your lights. And that means if for any reason one of the light bulbs burns out or an LED fails or any of those kinds of things, this can actually send you an alert to your phone and says, oh yeah, your right turn signal's burned out, just because it's able to monitor that. This is also the same technology that it uses to monitor the total current flow through that output. And if it exceeds the rated limit, then it shuts that output down just like the V2. And it basically has circuit breakers built in there. So if, it, if you have a short circuit on the bike, it's protected and this will just shut itself down. So that's some pretty cool stuff. Now to show you a little bit more about what this thing can do, uh, I'm actually going to turn off the Bluetooth on my phone because it's easier than walking across the shop out of range of what the M unit can, can sense. And that way I can keep talking with you. So there we go. Uh, Bluetooth shut down, M unit just lost connection to the phone. So now it flashed the turn signals and that means that the alarm is activated. 30 seconds after the alarm is activated, it will record the position of the bike and any uh, positional changes, accelerations, vibrations, etc., will prompt the alarm to go off. The way I've got it configured right now is for a pre-alarm, meaning it's going to flash the lights and just kind of say, hey man, don't mess with me. And then if you continue to mess with it, then it's going to go off the full boat and the horn will start going off, the lights will flash, all kinds of mayhem will break loose. So that seems like it's about 30 seconds, pretty close, maybe. So what if we, if we jiggle that? There we go. Just mind-blowing technology in this crazy small and simple to install package. While it's fairly simple to install, it does take quite a while to really master and understand and know all of the features that this thing has. Honestly, we're not gonna be able to cover everything in this video. So please explore on your own, read the manual, look through the, the information, go over everything. It's just outrageous what this little device is capable of. So beyond that, let's see, what else can we do? Let's, let's go over that keyless uh, go feature again. And to do that, I'm gonna need to Turn the Bluetooth back on, and once I see the lock uh, start to flash, now you saw the turn signals flash, that means that the alarm has been deactivated, and now if I wanted to, I could turn the bike on by just tapping the start button, and if I wanted to start it, press and hold the start button. Don't want to start it, it's too loud. Go for a ride, do our things, play with the turn signal, the other turn signal, whatever. Uh, honk the horn, headlight works, all that stuff. And then once we get where we wanna go, double click the start button and that shuts off the ignition. Double click again and that shuts off the bike. And now if I turn off Bluetooth again, simulating walking away from the bike, we'll see that lock input stop flashing. We'll get the flash to arm the alarm and that's it. No key, no fob, no nothing. Just walk up and, and, and go. How cool is that? I mentioned earlier that we have several inputs here that we are not using. One of those inputs is actually uh, the auxiliary two input, and that can be connected to the same speed sensor that you use for the Chrono Classic or any of the other Moto Gadget gauges. Um, it can also be set up to work with a factory speed sensor. Basically, all you need to do is send a ground reference pulse to that auxiliary two input one pulse per wheel revolution or some consistent number of pulses per wheel revolution. Basically, you just gotta get a signal for the wheel rotating to go to the Moto Gadget M unit. Once you have that wired in, 
as you're riding, you would ride at exactly 50 kilometers per hour, and as you're doing that, you triple click three times, click the horn button three times as you're riding, and that will that will initiate the speed and mileage calibration of the M unit blue, and the turn signal will flash for 10 seconds, and during that time you have to drive exactly the right speed, and once that 10 seconds is up, this knows how fast you're going, and now it knows how many miles you've ridden all the time, and it can actually feed information back to the app to say, hey, it's 3,000 miles, it's time for an oil change. Oh, it's been 15,000 miles, you better check your brake pads. All that kind of stuff, it can help you stay on top of your maintenance schedules. Now, we've talked a little bit in the beginning about how to do a retrofit installation on the Eminent Blue, but now if you're doing a full from scratch installation, it is a fairly involved process and you should expect to spend a good amount of time working on that. It's going to take you a couple days. Um, if you've already installed an M-Unit, yeah, it's a breeze. It's just 5, 10, 15 minutes to just redo the wires, bolt it down, maybe tap a new hole, not a problem. If you are trying to do an install on a factory bike, we've got a few other videos, one uh, titled How to Wire Your Motorcycle, and that gives just an overview of how the schematics work, what the idea behind this thing is. Um, also, you want to reference your wire diagram for your bike, trace out the ignition system, trace out the charging system, and you're going to replicate those the way they were on the stock bike with the exception that now they get their 12 volt switched power from the ignition output. If you wanted to add grip heaters, GPS, radio, who knows, whatever else you want to have, um, auxiliary lights, additional ground effects, fancy, who knows. You've got two auxiliary outputs here. Um, you can set those up and then configure the way that they work in the configuration manual. Speaking of, I'd forgotten about this. Another amazing thing about the new M-Unit Blue is with the original M-Unit, you had to do all your configurations by tapping wires and, and looking at LEDs flashing around on, on the M unit and cycling through different menu options. You can still do that with this, but you don't have to. It's a lot easier. I'm going to turn the Bluetooth back on. And then we can go into our J63 inside of the M-Ride app. Then we go into custom parts to get to the M unit. Then we go into setup. And now I've got all of this, the, the uh, configuration menus right here at my fingertips in English, and I can look at it. Okay, what handlebar controls? Uh, this bike runs a five button control, so configuration A is correct. All right, next up, tail light. Uh, one wire LED tail light, yep, that's correct. And on through how this all goes. Now I'm gonna turn that uh, alarm off, which is the very first option, alarm deactivated. And that way, as we're working around this bike in the shop, I'm not gonna have to deal with the alarm going off all the time. And that change to the way that the, uh, the configuration goes just makes it so much easier. There isn't any guessing, there's no process or timing. It's just go in, read the English, and make it do the things you want it to do. Absolutely incredible. Um, and with that, I think, We've thrown a lot of information at you in this video. Uh, we're still learning a lot about this product as we go. Um, these are state of the art. I don't know of any other product that's even remotely close to this, and you will not be disappointed. Even if you don't use half the features and functions of this device, it's still absolutely amazing. And that's not even to take away from the original, the V2. That's still a great product. That's still an amazing product. It's a lot simpler. It doesn't have nearly as many features. And if you want a better way to handle power distribution on your bike, that's the way to do it. If you want all the bells and whistles, M Unit Blue, that's the way to do it. So you can't go wrong. Moto Gadget stuff, top of the line. We stand behind it. We put it in all of our bikes. We know how to work with it. And if you've got any questions about your installation, you can email us at techsupport at revivalcycles.com. But before you do that, please read your manual, do some Google searches, check the forums, do the best you can to answer your own questions because honestly, I've been getting swamped with emails and it's taken a lot of my time to get answers back to every one of you. And it's really important that I help you guys, but if you can help yourselves first, that would make my life a hell of a lot easier. So, M Unit Blue, amazing piece of kit. You will not be disappointed. Check out revivalcycles.com and you can pick up your very own. Thanks for watching.